and welcome back. In today's video, we'll dive deep into some new exciting concepts in Jepa Compose that were highlighted at Google I.O. 2024. First, we'll explore the new type safe navigation structure in Jepa Compose. This new approach simplifies navigation by eliminating the need for string-based navigation. Next, we'll look at the Shared Element Transition API, which allows for smooth transition animations between composables when navigating from one screen to another. Make sure to stick until the end in order to learn all these new features. So without any further ado, let's get started. So we'll be using a pet application with a home and detailed page for demonstration purposes. You can find the source code on GitHub via the link provided in the de description box below. So to enable navigation with the new structure, we'll use the latest navigation release, which is currently in beta. When you clone the project, all the dependencies will be set up for you. So let's get started. Successfully clone the project, you're going to get this project structure here. So I have added data prior to this in order to help us learn these concepts. So I have added here the data, which contains the dummy pet data source. So here we have a pet which is just a class that contains properties for this pet here. And also we have the dummy pet data source that is going to give us a pet list for our data. Now, after that, then we have a detailed screen and also a home screen. So inside here, a home screen is where we're going to show the pet information with several composables. So you can feel free to check out these composables. And another case is the detailed screen with these composables here. Okay, so the next important thing which I have changed here is changing the navigation compose and also added a UI and the Coltrane serialization libraries, which are going to help us to see how we can use the navigation compose and also how to use shared element transitions, which I have applied them here and also used this Coltrane serialization plugin inside our build.redo file here and also change adding these three libraries which we are going to use. So let's now write our code. Okay, so after that, let's first run our application and see the initial project which we have. When you run your application, you are going to get this screen here with this pet information. But whenever you click here, nothing is happening. So for this case, let's hook up everything and make the navigation using the new navigation structure. Okay, let's create here a new package. Call this navigation. And here we can create a new coding class and let's call this destinations. Okay, so here we can make our object. And the first case here is we are defining our destination. So our first destination is home, which is just our start destination that particularly is not going to receive any type of data. But one thing which we have to do here is we have to add add serializable. And for this case here, this is going to make it available. So we're going to use Kotlin serialization for this case. Another case here is we want to create now a data class or you can just create a normal class. Detail the screen. Now in order to make this to have parameters, we can easily just pass in here. So for example, the ID, which is just going to be of type int, for example. And that's how we pass in the parameter. And now here we can just add at serializable and everything is looking perfectly. So no more defining string louts. So this one is going to be sufficing our need. So for this case, we can easily now create our navigation host. So let's create here a new package and let's call this. Now let's create here a new composable. So we want to pass in here the nav controller. Here we have to pass in the nav host controller. So we can just pass in here the nav host and basically pass in here the nav controller. And instead, here we want to pass in the start destination. And here we can open up. So our start destination here, we want this to be home. And directly, you can see we are just providing this class directly here, and nothing is going to complain. Now, the change which has changed here is passing the composable. So we can just call here this composable. And we want to pass in here now the uh, type which is going to be. So for example, the composable that is going to be home. And directly here, we can call our home composable. 
So inside our home composable, when you press Ctrl Q, you can see we have this on pet click, which is inside this Lambda function here. So whenever we click this, we want to navigate to the detailed screen. So for this case, we can use our nav controller now and we want to navigate. So we can call here navigate and we want to navigate to a certain destination. So for a case, we are just going to pass in here the detailed screen and we have to construct it. And you can see we have to pass in here the ID. So no more constructing the string based, which was really annoying. So here we can directly pass in the int to be our destination. Now, the last case here, we can create now our detail D screen. So let's pass in here the composable and we can just call here our detail. And now we can call our detail D screen. So inside here, our detail, we are going to receive a parameter. So we have to get this parameter. So how can we get it? So for example, here, let's create our detail. And this one is going to be of type detail. And we can easily now get it through the navigation back stack. So we can call it the to route. So this one is going to configure this directly to our detailed screen or detailed object which we have already created. So for this case, we can just call here our detail.id and pass in here the parameter as easy as that. And inside here, you can press Ctrl Q. You can see we have the on navigate, which is whenever the back button is going to be clicked. So for this case, we can just call our nav controller and call navigate back. This is everything which we have to get in order to make the navigation. So let's go to our main activity. And instead of calling this home directly here, we can directly call our navigation. So we can call here my navigation. And here we can pass in the modifier and give it the inner padding. Okay, so everything is looking perfectly. So let's try to run again. Okay, so our app is launched successfully. And here we have our first item let's just click it and you can see we are navigating directly here and not no problem which we are receiving so let's try another item let's click this one and you can see everything is working perfectly as expected okay so you can see here we have a smooth transition from one screen to another screen you can see whenever we use these two parameters so we have the name and also the image and whenever we click this back you can see everything is going smoothly. So let's see how we can add this uh, screen transition. Okay, so let's look at the shared element transitions. So these are seamless way to transition between composables that share consistent content. These transitions are particularly useful for navigation, creating a visually connected experiences as user move between different screens and composables. So the first case which we have to consider here is the shared transition layout. So this is the outermost required to implement shared element transition. So it provides a shared transition scope which is essential for the shared element modifier to work, which we are going to see. So the next we have the modifier to shared element. So this is going to flag a composable to the transition scope indicating that it should be matched with another composables during transitions in order to create those animations. So similarly also we have another modifier which is modifier.shared bounds. So this one is going to tell the transition scope that this composables bounds should save as the container bounds for the transition. So unlike shared element. Shared bound is designed for composables with different, visually different contents. So let's see how we can implement this. Okay, so the first case, let's go inside here, our navigation host. So I want to surround everything here so we can press Ctrl X and cut it. Now let's call our shared transition layout. And basically it's going to give us the shared transition scope. So we have to opt in since this is still an experimental. Then we can put up our data back. So you can see here we have our navigation host, which contains the data which we have. Now we want to match the transitions between one composables when we are navigating from home going to detail the screen. So how can we do this? Basically, we have to pass in two parameters. Okay, so we have added here the shared transition layout and now we have the transition scope. Okay, so for this case, we have to pass in the transition scope directly to this home composable here so that we can use it. So let's just go inside here our home composable and I want to pass in these two parameters here. So we have to pass in the shared transition scope and also the animated visibility scope. 
So we're going to see why we are going to need this. So we have to add here opt-in so that we can use the experimental APIs. The next case which I want to modify here is the image and the name. So this information is actually contained inside this pet information. So for this case, we can directly go inside here. And similarly here, I want to get these uh, variables, the shared transition scope and also the animated visibility scope. Now to make everything here, I want to surround. So we can use here a width. So this one is going to give us the context of this. So we want to pass in here the shared transition scope. And we want to pass in here our composables. So you can see here with this transition scope here, we have another modifier that we can use. So you can see when we call here modifier and we want to call the shared element. You can see we have this composable. So we have shared element and also shared element bonds. But similarly, if I just copy this and paste it here, you can see that we are not going to have access to this particular shared element transition. So we have to use this with the scope inside this transition scope so that we can easily now use these particular composables. So for this case, we have to add this inside here, our image. Okay, so the most important thing here is the modifiers or the order of modifiers actually crucial when dealing with JPA Compose. And basically the shared transition is generally advised to be kept uh, before adding any modifiers that are going to clip, for example, here. Okay, so inside here, I'm going to pass in this modifier, the shared element. So the first case, I have to pass in here the state, which is going to be remembering this particular shared content state. And I want to pass in here the key, which is going to help us to be used when we want to match this to another composable, when we navigate from this screen to another screen. The next case is the animated visibility scope, which we can pass it here. Now, the next modifier here is inside our name. Okay, so for this case, we are going to add this particular modifier here. So the different thing here is we are just changing here. So this is just a text slash name in order to make this to be a different key. And everything else is going to remain similar. So we are going to see this when we navigate from our home screen going directly to our detailed screen. Now let's directly go inside here our detailed screen. And here we have to pass in the Shared transition scope and also the animated visibility scope. Okay, so we have passed it here. Let's go directly to our home composable and we can go to our navigation graph. Okay, so here we can pass in the shared element transition. And actually here we can pass in the visibility, which is the animated visibility scope. Now we can easily change again here the detail the screen. So let's go to our detail screen. Okay, so inside here also I want to add these two parameters here, which is just the shared transition scope and also the animated visibility scope. Okay, so inside here, I want to copy everything so we can use here a width and pass in here the shared transition scope. And pass back here our data. Okay, so another case, if you don't want to be passing here down the composables, you can make an extension function. So for example, inside here, our pet basic info items, we can easily create our basic info. So for this case, we can just use our shared transition scope. And what we want to do here is to add this experimental API. And now we have the transition scope directly here. So we are creating an extension function for this case. So here we can match this. Let's go inside here, pet info. And what we want to do is to copy this. So let's just press Ctrl C. Let's go back to our detailed screen. And inside here, we can pass in here our shared element transition. So we have to pass in here the animated visibility scope. And instead of using pet, we can directly just use the name. 
Okay, so let's go inside here. We have our image. So we can directly just go inside here, pet information. And we want to copy this. So we can just press Ctrl C and go back to our detail this screen. And let's paste this code here. So you can see we have here our shared element transition. So this shared element transition scope is going to match between these two composables when we are navigating from one screen to another. So here let's pass in here the shared uh, transition scope. Sorry, we have to pass in here the animated visibility scope. So everything here is looking perfectly. So let's go where we have used our detailed screen. Okay, so similarly here we are passing here the transition scope and also we are passing the animated visibility scope. So with these few changes here we can have our animations ready. So let's try to run again and see. Okay, so our app is launched successfully. Now let's click here and see the navigation. So you can see that we have a smooth transition. Now let's click back here. And you can see also we have a smooth transition. Let's try another image here. Okay, so you can see the name and the image are animating. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to our channel for more tutorials on JEPA Compose and other exciting topics. Don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload new contents. We'd love to hear your thoughts. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Also, if there is any specific topic you'd like us to cover next, let us know in the comment section below. So let's leave it here. See you in the next video. Bye bye for now.